The Division launched with high praise as players dived in and played through the main campaign, ventured into the Dark Zone, creating allegiances to help defend the threats that not only came by way of NPCs but players as well, it became immediately apparent that the game lacked a single feature that would turn into one of the most wanted features in the Division, but ultimately one left out and left alone, that is until the arrival of the Division 2, where now the introduction and promoting of clans is a big thing. In fact, the system is not only completely controlled in-game, unlike others which require you to use third-party sources to even apply for said clans, but features for the clan system are so robust you start to understand why Massive Entertainment decided to forego the clan system in Division 1, which would have been tacked on and instead underwent with a completely new, built from ground up, for the Division 2. Clans in the Division 2 can consist of a maximum of 50 accounts, each with no more than 4 characters, which gives you a total of 200 slots, but technically still 50 users. That might not sound like a lot, especially in the world of MMOs, however this isn't an MMO and comparing it to say the likes of Final Fantasy 11 or 14 or even World of Warcraft is probably something you don't want to do in game size, composition or anything really. That being said, the average clan should fit comfortably within that maximum. Of course, the clan I'm in sadly will not. So, though Massive Entertainment have in part given us what we wanted, it would have been nice if this number was say 100, or it allowed you to create clan alliances that are able to communicate with each other. Not saying you can't create alliances, but as of right now nothing of this stature has been revealed, so hopefully if it's not available in game, they will actually introduce something like this at a future date, or actually increase that number by 50 to 100. It's not clear if there will be any interaction for clans by external sources either by way of mobile apps, discord forums, but one would hope with such a small number of users they wouldn't impose too many restrictions. The objective here by Massive Entertainment is simple, to make finding and joining clans as easy as possible. With this in mind, as mentioned earlier, they have opted to put everything clan related in game. So in game you'll find a clan search filter, allowing you to find clans based on the types of activity you want to play. To make things easier, the filters are designed in a way to cater for almost everyone. Here are the filters you can use. Activities, the primary focus of the clan, which is basically going to be PvE, PvP, or you have the option of both. Most active times, the time of the day the clan is most active, so if you're in the UK, most active time is probably going to be in the evening, right? Because people work. Atmosphere. The general atmosphere of the clan. Would you prefer a relaxed, easygoing clan, a clan focused on certain aspects of the game like raids, or a highly competitive PvP clan? Dark Zone related. Mic requirements. If the clan requires a microphone to be able to join. Some will do, some won't, but this will be a nice way, if you don't like using mics, to filter down the clans that you can join without having to go through the painstaking process of joining a clan and then finding out that they require a mic and then you having to start a search all over again. Pretty cool stuff. Language, the primary spoken language of the clan, which is pretty important. And finally, region, the geographical location of the clan members. This will also be useful in terms of ping and other things. Currently, it's unknown if any of these filters can be customized or if anything like atmosphere can be changed. I do not, however, believe this will be possible. In its current form, it looks like a simple yet robust way of finding like-minded players, maintaining that simple approach they set out for at the very beginning. Creating your clan in a Division 2 couldn't be any simpler. You'll first have to design your clan insignia using icons, backgrounds and borders, and I'm going to assume this will be the most taxing part of the whole process. Let's be honest here, this is going to be the thing that you want to show off to the rest of the community, so this is pretty much going to be the most painstaking process. Getting those pixels right, getting those insignias right, getting the right borders and everything else, you want it to be just right so when you go out there, you're proud of your clan. Next up, you'll need to name your clan and write up a short intro explaining what you're all about. Chaos Legion, right? Who doesn't like the sound of that? Awesome name, yes, yes, no, okay, I'll keep moving on. The last step is setting the Division 2 clan privacy level. For the privacy levels, you have the following options, open, searchable, and open for all players. This is pretty much a free reign. Invite only, which I assume is going to be the one that most people select, searchable but requires an application to be sent and reviewed by clan leadership. And finally, private. A private clan is not searchable and can only be joined through an invite sent by the clan's leadership. No clan of course is complete without a ranking system, right? Well, Massive pretty much thought of everything here. You can organise your clan members using these four rank stages. Commander, the leader, the Al Capone of the clan, 
which has access to all administrative functions of the clan. Lieutenant, the officer rank, which will be able to send out invites, review applications, promote and demote members, as well as moderate the clan feed, also known as the right hand man of the Al Capone. Agent, the established clan member able to invite potential recruits to the clan. And finally, recruit, also known as the grunts. The recruit is a new member of the clan with limited access to administrative clan functionality. For the top two roles, you will be able to dig a little deeper into the applicant's characters, gear, setup to see if they're a good fit for the job. So if you are a PvP focused clan and you're looking for the best, you can look at their gear. You can look and see what they're using, how they're playing, look at what type of perks they go for. Because if you're end game focused on PvP, this is something that you're going to want to look into and check out their feats and achievements. This gives you that level of functionality. It's clear that Massive Entertainment here are looking to push this and integrate this into the core system of the Division 2 and make this a fundamental aspect of how the game progresses forward. If done right, this could be the beginning of something very, very good. Like all service games with clans, you'll be able to earn additional experience for your clan by completing ordinary tasks. Any in-game actions completed by clan members will reward the player with XP and clan XP. By earning clan XP, you can help level up your clan. Just like our agents which will hit max level cap at level 30, clans will also level to a maximum of level 30. As your clan starts this exciting adventure journeying to the max rank, you'll be able to unlock new customization options and clan insignia options that evidence your clan's experience which is pretty awesome and shows everyone else that you actually are in it for the long haul. That's not all. Being part of a clan will mean you have clan projects, which will be another source of clan XP. These come in two forms, weekly projects and a clan cache that can be upgraded. For the latter, you'll need to reach a weekly clan XP goal, which once met will have additional stretch goals, yielding additional rewards across three tiers, bronze, silver and gold. Bronze unlocks guaranteed rewards, while silver and gold improve those. Clan projects, meanwhile, are weekly objectives that when completed provide the clan with a clan XP boost, so you'll likely want to do these first to help boost max XP gain as soon as possible for efficiency. Clan projects will come in multiple forms that will dial in on specific type of gameplays, which will range from raiding, doing missions, PvP, Dark Zone, you name it, there will be something for everyone to tackle and take part in, and if you manage to tick all of them off in a single week, you will get an extra clan XP reward. So as you can see, there will be something for everyone to help improve the clan. Everything you do will matter and not be wasted and ultimately benefit everyone in the long run. Finally, on the topic of clan XP, the top three clan XP earners will be shown off in the clan quarters. So your hard work won't go unnoticed. Again, pretty awesome if you ask me. So clan quarters, wow. What the hell? We are actually getting clan quarters? Something that we can call our own home, our own little hub, our own social space? What? I mean, this is something we've wanted forever. I mean, something I've wanted from Anthem, something I wanted when I used to play Destiny. You know, nothing like this ever happened. Fuck, this is amazing. I hope they actually manage to get this right. I hope they manage to actually do this correctly because having your own little social space where you can just go in there and just kid it out and put up your achievements as a clan and everything like this, man, that's good. That's just so awesome. So you want to know about clan quarters, right? Well, finally, the clan quarters. Yes, there is clan quarters here in Division 2. You will need to head to the east wing of the White House Base of Operations to find the clan quarters. There is also a clan stash here, so you can collect your weekly rewards. But more interestingly, there is also a unique vendor for you to buy stuff from. By leveling up your clan beyond a certain point, you can also purchase exclusive clan headgear here that features your clan's insignia. This is all cosmetic, mind you, but it is still damn awesome. Everything is designed to promote your clan and show off to the rest of the community your clan with pride. No clan, however, is complete without communication, and though I have reached out to Massive, I didn't get a response as of the recording of this video regarding text chat, and the fact that they didn't respond might just imply that there won't be one for consoles. It's available for PC, that's confirmed, it's coming pretty much as it was for the PC, but console again was not confirmed, and the fact that they are not confirming it makes me more dubious at the fact that it probably won't be in there. The game will support clan fees, which will let the clan members know member and clan feats that have been achieved. 
Additionally, and this I find odd, there will be clan voice chat consisting of two channels holding 25 players each. I don't think Massive really thought this through though. 25 people talking at once doesn't sound fun at all. My ears will have disemboweled the protocol to listen and will ultimately set me on a path to go rogue and silence them all. Maybe split them up to groups of 8? Probably would have been better if you asked me, but hey, once it's out, we will know for sure exactly how good or annoying this feature will be. But I would have preferred maybe four channels instead of two channels, 25 people in one channel. Though it can work that if we're using these two channels to pretty much just get groups and then split into our own PlayStation or Xbox chats, this I get could work. But if we wanted this to be in-game communication for like raids and things like this, with 25 people talking, it can get quite hectic quite quickly and pretty noisy. Well, that's pretty much everything for clans. If you find this useful, drop a like, subscribe for more Division 2 content. I will be covering the state of the game today and a bunch of other stuff. I'll also be giving my view and impression on the Division 2 later at some point this week with some luck. I'm pretty sure the clan ecosystem will be a massive success, pun intended, now all they need to do is increase the maximum size number and they are golden. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Remain legend. Or should I say remain agent? Eh, you guys know what I mean.